Countdown to kickoff. And you know this, man! Let's head out to Seattle, 950KJR, Curtis Crabtree. Curtis, how are you today? I'm good. Tavares Jackson, Charlie Whitehurst, is it safe to say the weakest position is that quarterback for this team? I think it's still a position that the roles are still pretty defined at this point as Tavares being the starter and Charlie being the backup. Charlie's played pretty well the first couple preseason games, and so he's trying to to give some doubt into the conversation and trying to make a battle of it. But as of right now, Pete, Pete Carroll continues to insist that, that Tavares is going to be their starter come week one. I don't know if I'd say it's their, their weakest position. The offensive line has really struggled so far, and trying to get some continuity along the offensive line has been, really been kind of a struggling situation. They had a really tough game on Saturday against the Minnesota Vikings where they couldn't protect Tavares at all. He was running for his, for his life for every second he was out there. He couldn't even get to, to step up into a pocket without having to run away for his life. So um, it's definitely one of the bigger questions on the roster as to what's going on. But Seattle still has some other issues in some other areas as well. well let's talk about the acquisitions. Uh, Sidney Rice came in in the offseason, tight end Zach Miller. How much does this improve a passing game that ranked towards the bottom in total receiving yards, yards per catch, and touchdowns. Well, I think it gives them a few more explosive playmakers that could do things when they get the ball in their hands. Seattle's problem last year was when Mike Williams, who came in off the street from what looked like a bust as an NFL career to, to become their best receiver a year ago, he, he missed a couple games with injury, and when he did, the, the passing game especially completely stagnated. So it was really difficult to, for them to move the football at that time. Uh, bringing in guys like Sidney Rice should make e- e- Mike Williams even more effective being a second guy trying to, to make it to where he, the offense can finally start dictating coverages from the defense as opposed to uh, having to try to react to what the defense is going to do to be successful. Um, Zach Miller, the offense that Tavares Jackson ran in Minnesota was very tight end heavy, going to Vasanthi Shanko a lot. And down in Oakland where Tom Cable, their assistant offensive line, their, their offensive line coach and assistant head coach uh, was at a year ago, they obviously used him extensively down there in the passing game as well. So it's a couple other uh, options and weapons that you can feel pretty good about if they can get the protection to allow Jackson to get the ball out of his hand. Let me ask you then, your your personal opinion and only your personal opinion, do you think that he was wrong in leaving instead of taking a $2 million pay cut? Uh, um, it does not surprise me at all that he decided to leave. I don't know if I would say he was wrong. Uh, I, I think he's still a starting quality linebacker in this league somewhere. Uh, he's obviously had a, having a little bit of trouble finding a job that fits him the way he wants it to. Yeah. But, you know, Lofa can still play when he's healthy. And he's had a couple of rough seasons with, with injuries the last couple of years. He had a torn pectoral in 2009, played every single game last year, but was dealing with, you know, knees that were not – not the healthiest and had to have surgery on both of his knees over the off season. And so, you know, there's, there was reasons for both sides to want to go separate ways. They wanted to, him to take a, a reduction in pay because of the fact that he, he hadn't really proven a whole lot the last couple of years due to injury. He hadn't played as well as they would have liked him to play. And he obviously feels that he's going to be back to the level that he can play at. And, and he didn't want to, find himself buried on the depth chart be behind somebody he thought thinks he's better than. So uh, I completely understand why that if they both decided to make the decisions they did, and I, I don't begrudge Lowe for, for making that decision. I think he can still start in this league. Let's talk about Pete Carroll. Certainly has people talking in Seattle. What has he brought to the town of Seattle? Well, winning, for one. Even though it was just a seven-win season a year ago, he got them in the playoffs and they won a playoff game. That was something they hadn't seen in a couple of years. The, per the previous general manager, Tim Ruskell, had really run the team into the ground from a talent perspective. Him and John Schneider have really worked hard to overcome that. They've, I, think, <laughs> I think the number is there's only 16 players left on the entire 90-man training camp roster that they inherited when they took over the team uh, about a year and a half ago in January. So they've really cleaned house hard over the previous, you know, 17, 18 months or so and tried to get a better quality athlete into the building. Um, Tim Ruskell, the way his drafting philosophy was, was to take big school guys, 
you know, the USC's, the Texas's, and so forth, and guys that were not necessarily the best athlete, guys that had a a lower ceiling but also a higher floor, guys that he kind of knew what they were going to do. He didn't take a whole lot of boom or bust picks, guys that, you know, could be great but also could fall flat on their face. He didn't want to make that decision. They didn't take those kind of players, and it really cost them because they really didn't get any top-flight athletes in here when he was here. So the biggest thing has just been getting a, a better quality athletes out on the field, and they've got that this year. When it comes time to make their cuts down to 53 men for the regular season, they're going to end up cutting a couple guys that can play football and play it at a good level, and that's a, that's a big change from the last few years. Well, let's go out to Facebook, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash TYT Sports. Ron Captain asks you, it looks as though Charlie Whitehurst has outplayed Jackson in the preseason, but Pete Carroll seems to still believe in offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel and the chemistry between the two. Is Pete Carroll in charge or Daryl Bevel? Pete Carroll's in charge of this team. Uh, Daryl Bevel doesn't have an overly excitable personality to, to where you would think there would be any kind of a clash there. If there Pete Carroll's definitely got a hand on this team. Um, I don't look at the quarterback situation in that same way. If you look at the first two games, in the first game, Tavares played two series where he had his starting left tackle go down three plays into it and didn't really have a chance to get into a flow. And on top of that, you take the fact that the free agents couldn't start practicing with the teams until a week before their first preseason game, and they just don't have a chemistry built up yet with that first-team offense. There really hasn't been a whole lot to evaluate about Tavares as far as the passer goes because he hasn't had a chance to even step up in the pocket and make a throw. So I think when you look at the, the, the situation with Tavares Jackson and Charlie Whitehurst, Whitehurst has been playing against second and third string guys with, with going against a defensive line that's not the top tier off defensive lineman coming at him. The, their second string line has been able to handle that a little bit more. He's been able to have time to throw, and they've run a lot of boot action rollouts with him giving him half field reads, and he's played well in that system, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think there's been anything so far to suggest that you make a change at quarterback due to that, and, and uh, that's, I think, the, the same thought pattern that Pete Carroll has. Last for you, Curtis, over under six and a half wins for the Seahawks. What do you think? Well, uh, seeing that I've got them pegged as a 6-10 and 10 team, I'll go under, but just barely. That's right about where I have them. Um, I just think, it, especially with the, the lack of an off season. A lot of the mistakes they're making right now on the offensive line are stuff that they would usually make in May and June during mini camps and OTAs and would be addressed by now. When you've got all these new guys coming in two weeks before the season begins, the preseason begins, and trying to get everybody up to speed, you're going to have issues. And that's what's going on with Seattle right now. I think they're going to be a much better team late in the season than they are going to be to start. I think they could start off the season really badly like a one and four, one and five, two and six, something like that. But I think they'll be able to win some games late in the season and uh, start to really come around later on in the year. 